stone has been used as a building material for thousands of years. Its aesthetics and sense of permanence has made it a popular material, especially among builders and architects. Many of the significant buildings throughout history have been constructed of stone. The evolution of stone facades closely parallels the evolution of building construction and technologies. Economics and alternative building systems have led to numerous variation in the installation of stone on building facades over the past 100 years. A complete understanding of the material and installation techniques is critical for the proper design and installation of thin cladding systems. This week we had a chance to explore spaces that have gone the extra mile to attain a classy look through a wall cladding technique that is becoming popular with the Kenyan architectural and design enthusiasts. Our first stop was at an office space that greets us with the savanna wall cladding technique. For starts, this workspace has an airy look and feel to it. Natural light has found its place thanks to the large windows. Art, on the other hand, plays the welcoming role on almost all the walls within and around this office space. What stands out the most is a wall cladding that has been carefully arranged to enhance this entire workspace into the ideal. So, who say that concrete has to look grey and drab? Well, Tony Gashia, the designer who I met this week, is one who seeks to demystify that question. Hi. Hi, Tim. How are you doing? Fine, and you? All how right, are you? great, great, great. Good. Have a seat, man. It's pleasure. <laughs> I met him in one of the sites he has developed his skill in wall cladding, and this is what Savannah Stone is all about. Who is Savannah Stone? Savannah Stone is actually a company that uh, creates very natural looking stone from concrete. Uh, we are the first manufacturers in Kenya to do veneer stone the way that we do it. What's veneer stone? What do you mean by veneer stone? Veneer stone is, imagine this, if uh, you wanted something in your living room wall that is not there right now, but you wanted it in stone, you will not go looking for full length stone or full width stone. What you do is get veneer, a face of stone that you put on your wall and make it look natural. Does that mean I move away from painting and now go stone or what's the trend? Well, a painting, there's a space for painting your wall. But if you want to go beyond that, you can have uh, what we call now the veneers and uh, other different finishes that come in. And uh, veneer stone now falls into that. It really gives you more character. And at the same time, you've got a lot of leeway. You can really play around with it and do something that looks rustic or something that looks really refined, all in a veneer. The popularity of thin stone cladding system in the building industry will likely to continue at great levels. A proper understanding of the materials, design, constructability are important to proper design of thin stone cladding systems. Are these for interior? No. Alone, or mm. it's just an exterior effect? No, 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 you can, you can use it anywhere. You can use it interiors, in the interior, you can use it on exterior walls, you can use it on uh, wooden walls, you can put it up on gypsum. Anything that is structurally um, stable, you'll be able to put the veneer stone on. 
What is a driving philosophy? Why did you get into this? There's only so much that you can do in natural stone. But when we take veneer stone, the veneer stone that we manufacture and you take it through the processes that we, that we take it through, the possibilities are limitless in terms of shapes and sizes and textures and colors. All that we would be able to control to suit the customer and, and the project that they have in mind. So for example, you could take a certain design in one color, for example, for a particular project. And whereas that would look good, but maybe we would want a different color of that same design for a different project. Uh, instead of going to different quarries and getting different stones, yes. we'd be able to manufacture that stone from our workshop and be able to put it up for the customer. How in, what are the intricacies involved in creating veneer stone? Well, um, it's taken a lot of research and a lot of trial and error, but we've been able to come up now with a process where we'd be able to mold the stone to virtually any shape that we want and we'd be able to get the textures that we want from uh, we have mold makers and artisans who really work on the masters and then after that we'd be able to make our molds and start production we are the ideal space we're not about talk we want you to show you want to see the thing huh? yeah definitely all right then follow me <laughs> <laughs> Now, Tim, this is one of the external applications of Savannah stone. That dark stone that you see down there. Yeah. And it's all, everything that you see, all that dark area at the top there. Yeah. That's the same design, but now in a different color. So that's what I meant when, you, when, when I was talking about versatility. We, if you had to get this stone from, uh, to get natural stone to be that dark, it's, 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 you'd have to look for it quite a, quite a bit. Is that paint? No, no, it's actually what we call a surface treatment. Oh, is it a primer? No, it's not a primer. It's, it's actually a finishing of the stone. It's, uh, there, are, there are many different types of finishes you can put on stone. And uh, what it does is that it's not as thick as paint, but it retains the color that you put on. So the texture of the stone will remain exactly the same. It's only the color that's changing. Where do you treat the stone? Is it on location, like say um, here or in the factory? No, what we do mainly because of a lot of the cutting that will be done, yes. we prefer to treat it once it's on the wall. Right. Yeah. Okay, Tim, you ready to go up? Yep. Okay, be careful, huh? All right. Hope you brought your work boots. <laughs> Tim, yeah. when you come to site, you wear shoes like this, man. <laughs> Not <All right>. rubber shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what you wear on site. <laughs> Not rubber shoes. <laughs> do you apply the, the seal? The seal is after we put everything and brushed it off and taken care of any, of any uh, big spaces with the grout, that's when we come in and we apply the seal after what that. What kind of a seal is it? It's actually an acrylic based seal. Um, you can have an acrylic based seal that will give it a kind of a sheen yeah. or you could have a silicone based seal which just waterproofs it, doesn't give it any kind of a sheen, leaves the natural look as it is. Does it come in this? For this particular design, yeah. it does come in this. But um, there are some stones, there, there are some designs that we have, especially the classic rough stone, we call it the classic rough stone, where it's single pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, single piece stone which you actually put and uh, but it, but it will look like natural stone. Now, what about this little space that's remained over here? What's oh, okay. going to happen? Now, this here is a space for lighting. As you'll notice, this is an outside sitting area. Mm. So they're going to have lighting, uh, a light fixture put there. We make provisions for those also, so that we do not have 
we, we, we cut around any fixtures that need to be fixed. Okay. Uh -huh. right. But that's just after you've done your wiring and everything. Oh, yep. That's after you've done the wiring. The electrical guy has to have done everything. And I'll show you in one of the sites that we, that we visit next, you'll be able to see exactly what goes into, into the pre-wiring. Okay. Stay tuned, the idle space will be right back after the break.